Hello, my name is Dana, and I'm going to give you a brief overview of animating with CSS. Take note brief. This is also what I like to call the cool things that don't need JavaScript. So you've probably heard that CSS is for styling and JavaScript is for animating. While that's true, did you know that you can use CSS for animating? Using CSS for animating is great because you don't need to go through the process of setting up a JavaScript file and linking that JavaScript file to your HTML file. CSS for animating means that you can have your CSS file for both styling and animations. Um, all of the slides are posted here as well as a couple of helpful links. So this is a site built with pure CSS and it's something that I really appreciate because it's always really pretty to look at. So yeah, just like a small example of um, how you can animate with just pure CSS. Cool, so now I've convinced you that you can use CSS for animating. So you're probably wondering now, like, what can I use and where do I start? So let's start off with transitions. So transitions make everything smooth and pleasing to look at. So, oh, okay. So this is a little sample look of like what you can do with transitions. So you can see that without transitions, it looks a bit clunkier. So transitions make everything look nice and smooth. So this is the co code for it. Um, and I just want to break it down. So the all refers to all the transition properties or CSS properties that can be affected by transitions. So the 0.5s is basically like 0.5 seconds, and that's how long the transition will occur for. So the ease is called a transition timing function. And to give you a little overview of that, it's basically a way to specify how the transition looks like. That is, does it start slow and end slow? Does it start fast and end slow? Does it start fast and end fast? Something like that, and so on. So a short list of all of these transition timing functions. Um, take note the cubic visor. This allows you to define your own values so you have better control over your transitions. Highly encourage that you play around with it because it's really fun. Okay. An important note is that you have to modify for every browser. As awesome as transitions are, you have to remember that you have to specify transitions for different browsers. If you don't do this, you could potentially limit your user. If you're confused on how to do this, don't worry, we'll get there in a second. So notice how we added more things that are related to transition. So now the transition that I previously showed you will work for Safari, Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, and Opera. So it's just a matter of like, adding WebKit transi dash transi transition, Mozilla dash Mozilla dash transition to make it compatible for all browsers. So if you want to know more about transitions, take a look at the, Git the GitHub repo and then go to the README. Okay. So you can also do a lot of cool things with animations. So this may look a little bit familiar. And it's basically sort of doing the same thing with animations, except um, it's basically sorry, it's basically doing the same thing with transitions, except with animations. So I'm not hovering over it; it's just going by itself. And I'm also adjusting like the time, so you can see how slow or fast they go. The code is slightly different, though. So instead of transition, we have animation. So note the keyframe. And note how in animations we have the word foo, and how in keyframe we also have the word foo. So think of foo as kind of like a function or a way to like call a particular keyframe on um, a particular object. So to break it down, break the animation part down, we have foo, which is linked to the keyframes. We have the 5s, which is how long the, trans the transition or animation will go on for. And then the infinite just means it will go on forever. So the keyframes specify certain properties of the div during certain points in time. So it starts at 0%, the object, the div, is the back, has the background color azure. And at 100%, it has the background color this thing, <laughs> that particular color. So if we added a new background color to say 50%, it would pass through that background color before going to the 100% one. And just does it in a very smooth way. Keyframes are cool, so you get because you get more control 
over of your animations because of keyframes. So just a little demonstration. So this is like a small little animation. I'm, I'm tilting the div um, as time goes on, and it goes it just goes on forever. So the code just got cooler. So note that I added position to my div. This is so that I can adjust the left part of the div. And I also added more percentages. More percentages mean more control over the animations. I'm adding different, what I like to call, states to my div. You can have C different CSS properties at different times. So at 0%, the left side is, like 20, is at 20 pixels. So there's no transformation whatsoever. At 25%, the left got bigger. So it moves away from the left side. And the transition begins to tilt. At 50%, the transition, uh, the, sorry, the div tilts less and it's further from the left edge, and so on and so forth. You can see how, di how the div becomes different or looks different at different time periods. An important note, you have to modify for every browser again. So the code for this won't exactly fit, but just to give you a general overview of what you have to add to your code, not you know, erase completely and destroy, but just adding. So you have the dash webkit animation to make it more compatible across browsers. So it's basically the exact same thing as this code, except we just added the webkit. So if you want to learn more about animations, I posted a couple of helpful links again on the repo. So well, the story, CSS is powerful. It's a lot more than just a styling tool. You can make your website look cleaner and more polished by using transitions and animations. And JavaScript is obviously a great animating tool, but you should all definitely consider CSS as a substitute, especially if you're running out of time and you don't have time to learn JavaScript and you just want to ship something really quickly, you can just use CSS. Alrighty, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to do something like this. So it just goes by itself, and it's a pretty cool animation of hello. <laughs> With a little thing in the back. So this is a little code for it. And I'm going to try my best to replicate it. So um, right here. So specify the HTML tags. That's important. And then the head tags. And then the body tags. Cool. So I'm going to have three divs. So I'll call one div div1, and another div, oh, close that div, sorry, and then have another div which will have the, oops, the text, hello. Oops, forgot to close that. Uh -huh. And another div called div2. Okay, so I'll write that, um, and then I'm going to open that file. So it looks like that. It's very plain. It's very boring, which is not nice, obviously. So now I'm going to link link row sheet. I think I'm just going to copy paste the code for that here. So right now I'm gonna I'm just linking the style sheet for this code. And all since it's gonna be sample five, that's the that's should be the same because there's nothing in the CSS file. So this, this thing, the one that I'm typing on, is our CSS file. So first, I want to make sure that all my divs are in these are on the same line. Line block, and that it becomes blocked um, if it's in the same line, on, in the line. 
So sort of the same thing. So it's kind of confusing because like, you know, we can't really see the colors. So I'm going to have the first div have a width of mm, or rather have a height of 500 and then have the width 100% so it spits the entire screen. Same for the second div. It's a bit of a repetition I would say but um, it'll work out. Um, and I'm going to just have a random color. So I'll name this color green first div, for the first div. The color will be green. And the second color will be red. It's Christmas time. <laughs> so now it's a bit clearer to see like where the divs are and what's going on. It still looks really ugly. <laughs> but we will fix it. So first off, I'm going to make the text hello have a color so that we can just see for for this, we'll change the color later, but um, just so that we can visualize properly, we'll, we'll have like have a color, which is the same thing first. And then we'll make the font family. I do not know how to spell, so I need to look back a little bit. <laughs> And it will, and if the um, Bebas new isn't in the user's font directory um, set of fonts, then it will just default to a sense share of font. So it looks widely better, not really. And I want to make the font size a little bit bigger. I think I specified that as 10 en. So it's huge, and if it's the whole thing down. Now, let's work on animating the two divs. So uh, let's make it, what what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a change color. So the frames, I'll just say pulse, pulse one for the first div. And I believe sorry, zero percent. I'm going to do oops. Oh, nope. Okay, that doesn't matter. Because I don't quite remember all the percentages that I specified. But the background color, let's say at 0%, which is the starting, will be hashtag 66 So that shouldn't have anything because I didn't um, specify an animation for the first div. So I'm going to specify an animation for that, and it will be pulse 1. It will last for 5 seconds and it will go for infinite amount, an infinite amount of time. And I want the effect, the ending effect, to have a background color of OOCCFF. Let's double check that's correct. It's correct. So hopefully we'll be able to see a change in color. And indeed, it is changing color, so that's good. So, I will also add this for the second div. Oh. Actually, I want the reverse to happen for the second div. So, 
oops, okay, keyframes, plus two, and the second div, actually these two will have the same uh, pulse. So for the second div, I'll specify animation as well, pulse one animation. It will last for five seconds, and it will go for an infinite amount of time. Cool. So they're both animating, so that's great. So now I want it to move. And what we're going to do now I want it to, so actually this should have two separate animations because they're go, both going to be in opposite directions. So, we're just going to do the same thing. It will end there. And then I'm going to make this different. The pulse 2. And now we're going to start transforming them. So we're going to make it tilt right and left. So let's start off with the first div. So the first div, we will have a skew, it will start off with a skew of 0 degrees. And it will end with a skew at 180 degrees. Nope, it was actually 140. Okay. So, so as you can see, it's tilting by itself, which is cool. Now, okay, where am I? Okay, we're at the HTML file, so we're going to move to the CSS file. So now I want the opposite, I want the same thing to happen for the second pulse. So I'll start at Zero degrees. And it will end at a skew of one eighty degrees. Oops. So they're both transforming, which is not exactly similar to this, but they are moving, so that's good. Plus two. So now to get a make it move to make the second pulse move in reverse, we want to make this negative, so it'll tilt the opposite way. It won't follow. It won't follow the first one. So we're sort of getting somewhere, right? But like, it's still not. It's still not this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make each of the animations for the div a lot more accurate so I have a better grip on the animations. So I'll start off with oopsies. I will start off with the first div. I just want to make sure that I yes, I did specify the right animation for it. So at 10%. Definitely want to keep the background color. So the only thing I will change is the transform. So it will skew to 10 degrees. And actually, just so that it's easier to, for us to visualize and see and we don't get confused with the two divs, we're going to we're going to comment the second div. 
like that. So as you can see, it's you, did you see the the little stop? So that's that stop. It stopped there because like we tilt, we slow down the tilt just a little bit. So I'm going to keep adding. So at 20%. I would want my skew to be 90 degrees. And let's see if this makes a new change. So did you see it was like it was very quick the way it kind of crossed. So that was our skew to 90 degrees at 20%. And then now let's add a 50%. So 50% when it reaches halfway, it will transform and skew. Oops. Okay. Transform and skew to 100 degrees. So it'll tilt. It'll become even closer to the 140 degree skew or tilt. So you can see that little slow down right there. Now. We'll do the we'll do practically the same thing for the second pulse, except we'll make them negative so that it goes in the opposite direction. So transform skew at ten. We'll just change this to negative ten. And here. We'll make this 20%. And then we'll have the skew to, if I recall, it was 890. And then we'll make it negative. And here we'll have 50. And then Again, this trend, the skew will be the same, except it's negative. So, 100. Just make sure that I'm copying the right degrees. Yes, I am. Okay. So this will be 140. We forgot to, I forgot to uncomment the div in the HTML file. So save that. As you can see, we're getting closer. So that's good. Now we have we have an issue of the hello being blocked by the two divs, but that is a pretty easy fix. So we'll just go all the way to the top right here. And then we will specify We will specify the positions as relative, and you will see, and we will see why later how this will affect um, whether or not this will, and you will see how this will affect the hello being blocked. So cool it's position relative. So hopefully now we can adjust the z index and make it make the hello really high the div significantly lower z index negative 1 so let's see if this worked it worked great so now the only thing we have to worry about is the position of the text. So I'm going to make the margin of the text just a little bit bigger on the left side. So it was 1 EM. So now I moved a little bit to the right because I made the margin of the left bigger. Now we're going to focus on changing the animation of the text. So again, we do at keyframes. 
and then let's call this animation change color. So at 0%, the color will be black so that we can see it. At 100%, we want it to be white. So this won't do anything to it yet because we have the original color still kind of blocking the animation. So let's remove this. Okay, that didn't work. That was weird. So change that first. I think. See, there I didn't. I probably didn't save it. So let's that. that. So hopefully this one worked. Okay, that's weird. It didn't work. Hmm. Okay. Oh, it's because we didn't specify the animation, of course. So include that animation tidbit here. Um, change color. Five seconds. Infinite. It goes on and on. Oops. Okay, save that. And as you can see, it's slowly changing color, but it's not changing color at the exact time we want. There's a difference, as you can see. The white is already is, is becoming is faster than the divs. We can easily change that by having a another by adding another percentage. So the percentage that I added here was 50. So this slows it down, just the trans the changing color just a little bit. So after 50, it starts to change faster. So that was a little demo of what you can do with animations. Obviously, um, you can just let your, let your imagination go crazy and think about all of the animations that you would want to do with, and with JavaScript and try to like make that with CSS instead. It could potentially make your life a lot easier. Cool. And I just want to say thank you. So. Um, I hope you found this helpful. If you want, you just reach out to me on Twitter, check out my GitHub or my website, and a party like Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs>